So good evening, everyone. Um, welcome. It is truly a privilege to be able to come before you today. I am Maria Hauser. And just about three years ago, I joined the DeKalb team from the Troutman Pepper Law Firm to manage the consent decree and the broader um, capital improvement program. Um, I also have an engineering background, so I'm a two-part participant here. So this evening, we are here to provide everyone in the community with information regarding what is being called the Emory Sewer Lining Project. Um, as I welcome everyone, I would also like to give a warm welcome to our elected officials. Um, Commissioner Rader is here, and I believe Terry will be joining us as well. Um, and I believe I'm hearing music in the background. That's great for my intro. Um, but this project is significant because it is one of the first projects that DeKalb County is undertaking since the entry of the modified consent decree late last year. Um, so what do I mean by the modified consent decree? I'm not sure if too many of the community members have heard of the consent decree um, and even the modified consent decree. So as you will hear throughout this presentation, the water and sewer infrastructure in DeKalb County, like other cities and other counties throughout the US has been neglected for decades. Um, one symptom you may know of that neglect is sewer spills in the community, especially when we have wet weather, a lot of rains, um, storm water gets into the system and sewer comes out. Last year um, in federal court, um, Judge Grimberg entered into an agreement between the Department of Justice, the Environmental Protection Agency, Georgia's Attorney General Office representing the Georgia Environmental Protection Division and DeKalb County. And that agreement dictated how DeKalb County will proceed in fixing its deteriorated sewer system. That agreement is what we called the consent decree. It was originally entered in 2011 it has been modified last year. So that's what's now known as the modified consent decree. Under that agreement, DeKalb County is required by the court, DOJ, Department of Justice, EPA, EPD, to correct deficiencies in the system in your community within a seven year window. So we've been hard at work already fixing those deficiencies. Today um, on the agenda, you will see we have a team of experts here to share information with you regarding this project and to answer your questions. Um, you're gonna see um, on the screen before you the names of my colleagues and their areas of expertise. But before we get started um, with the history of the department and an introduction to the project, I would like to have your commissioner, Commissioner Rader, um, who has supported um, the efforts to move forward, rebuilding our infrastructure. Um, he has voted for, for contracts and um, the consent decree so we could fix the system. So I would like to give you, sir, Commissioner Rader, an opportunity to share some words. Thank you, Ms. Hauser and uh, Mr. Hayes and your whole team. I wanna thank you all for being here tonight uh, to provide this comprehensive explanation of um, this particular project and give uh, our citizens and affected uh, stakeholders uh, some context for uh, the work that is about to begin. As Ms. Hauser mentioned, um, DeKalb County is responsible for uh, your um, essential life supporting um, infrastructure in the county, notably water and sewer, as well as sanitation infrastructure. Um, and those systems developed over many decades um, naturally require uh, regular maintenance in order to continue to operate both to deliver services to you, as well as to protect the environment. Um, unfortunately here, as well as in many areas, 
um, the infrastructure went in under a uh, delivery strategy that relied heavily upon the development community to provide sewer um, where they were putting new development in, but it really did not have the uh, ongoing maintenance complement that is necessary to make sure that that system remained in good condition, that uh, its integrity uh, was uh, preserved and that it uh, continued to function as uh, required. Um, the, uh, the federal government, um, as is their responsibility, brought that to our attention. And I think that the county fully um, embraced um, our responsibility for compliance and have uh, been working first to understand the issues because um, understanding this complex system was the first step in that process. But then from that emerged several uh, different programs, um, a priority area uh, focus where uh, lack of capacity or overflows was, uh, were identified, but also importantly, an ongoing maintenance program that will persist into the future and really into perpetuity to make sure that the system is maintained on an ongoing basis. Um, this is within a priority area, but ultimately the type of uh, work that you're seeing here um, will be part of an ongoing maintenance program that will occur um, for uh, many years in the future. And what that means then is that we won't worry in the future about having sewage going into our streams and creeks and the uh, capacity of the pipes will be uh, preserved and protected to serve its public utility purpose rather than carrying these uh, flows of stormwater that have infiltrated it into the past. So this is essential work that needs to be done and I'm glad to report that there are many sophisticated and very clever ways that uh, have been identified and will be used in order to minimize disruption and to achieve um, those system maintenance goals. So I don't wanna steal too much from uh, the story that is about to be told, but I'll close and say that um, you don't make an omelet without breaking any eggs. And we realize that there may be some level of uh, disruption associated with this project. Um, the uh, watershed department has developed some uh, feedback mechanisms that they'll tell you about and, um, and communication mechanisms that will keep you fully um, looped in in terms of what's uh, happening and when it will happen. But as with all things, um, if you need an answer that you're not getting from some other means, please call our office and uh, we will uh, get that answer for you or we will put you in touch with the folks that can solve your problem. And uh, as many of you know, um, our office uh, is available uh, comprehensively off of our website at commissionerrader.com, but also uh, the uh, real face of our uh, commission office is Caroline Enlow and you can reach her at 404 371-2863, or you can obviously uh, uh, reach us at our email address, jrader at decabcountyga.gov. So um, please do reach out uh, to us if you have any problem uh, fully satisfying your needs, but as I think that you'll be able to see, um, the Watershed Department has uh, anticipated and resourced many ways of uh, being able to, um, uh, to get the information that uh, you will want about this project. And the great news is that when it's done, um, the sewage capacity will be uh, sufficient and um, we can rely upon our streams to be uh, free of uh, sewage pollution and um, uh, our quality of life to be improved by those efforts. So I will turn it back over to the team and um, uh, I will, with you, um, enjoy the presentation. Thank you, Commissioner Rader. Um, do we have any other commissioners um, on the Zoom call at this time? Okay. If not, we will continue with the presentation. I would like to introduce to you um, our director of the Department of Watershed Management. He has been a longtime employee of DeKalb County. 
um, Mr. David Hayes, Director Hayes. Good evening. Thank you, Ms. Hauser. As she mentioned, my name is David Hayes. I am the Director of the Department of Watership Management. Um, I'm a licensed water professional and I've been a member of the DeKalb County Water Team for now more than 26 years. So we're going to start with the state of our infrastructure. Next slide, please. Unfortunately, DeKalb County has not invested necessary resources to properly maintain our water and sewer system. The lack of proper maintenance has allowed what you see pictured here. It's deteriorated pipes, root and dirt filled pipe, pipes filled with fats, oils and grease. These defects have caused a series of issues to include sewer overflows and spills and lack of sewer capacity that restricts the county's growth and development. Next slide, please. The CEO Thurman, he came aboard in 2017 and he immediately proclaimed the new day. The new, the new day program engaged consent decree issues and addressed priority areas that we com that compiled our priority fix list. The department immediately focused on identifying the root underlying issues that symptomatic problems in the sewer system, created problems in our sewer system. Next. What do we do in watershed? A brief overview. We're allowed to take in as much as 120 million gallons of water from the local river to treat for drinking. We currently average 70 million gallons per day of drinking water to the homes and businesses throughout the Cab County. We have the ability to receive back and treat 56 million gallons per day of sewer from the homes and businesses throughout the Cab County. All water and sewer is conveyed using DeKalb's 5,000 miles of water and sewer pipe in the grounds around and throughout the county. If extended pipe end to end, this is enough pipe to extend from Georgia to California and back. Next slide, please. Most homes and businesses are connected to the DeKalb County system with a pipe that is referred to as a lateral. On the DeKalb County side of the connection is a gravity sewer. The gravity sewer is the pipe that allows sewer to flow underground gravity power to the wastewater plant for treatment. Older laterals that connect the residents and businesses to DeKalb County may be cracked, broken, they may have missing caps, illicit rain gutter connections, root intrusion, fats, oils, and grease buildup, or they may be just damaged from contractors and construction. These issues allow unwanted rainwater to enter into the sewer system, thereby taking, taking up much of the needed capacity. It also allows blockages that prevent the flow of sewer. These blockages and, and uh, capacity issues are some of the things that this project is going to uh, address and correct. Next slide, please. Again, why is the county replacing and repairing these sewer lines? The engineering department is, a leading, is leading the effort to repair and replace the county's aging infrastructure. These repairs will reduce overflows and improve customer service. That will yield an upgraded system that will allow future development and growth for the gap. Next slide, please. We have dedicated a full team to this project to include every needed resource, from watershed and all other DeKalb County departments and several industry leading engineering and construction firms who will all be led by watershed's own engineering department. This will allow a timely, safe and successful project. I'm now going to turn it over to our assistant director of compliance, Mr. Brent Zern. 
Thank you. <clears throat> Pardon me. Thanks, uh, Mr. Hayes. Appreciate that. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Brent Zern. I'm the Assistant Director over Compliance and Consent Decree Programs for Watershed. Um, just a real quick shout out to all of my old Emory friends. I see several of you on here tonight, so uh, I'm glad you and everybody could uh, could hop on. Um, so what does the assessment mean for this project? Well, it means that I manage um, all of the really talented and dedicated professionals who are the first, but certainly not only, uh, line of defense in protecting the county's environmental interests, your property, and arguably, most importantly, our tax dollars. Um, and that effort is otherwise known as the assessment. Um, we need to understand where the pinch points are in the system. Um, that is the first step in assessing and figuring out how to address the areas of concern. Next slide, please. Sorry. So why do we have to assess? Well, that is pretty obvious. You've heard it already. Um, we have SSOs, sanitary sewer overflows, and we have several repeat overflows. So since this project, since the, the pipes for this project are large diameter, we used a strategy called the TISIT. Um, TISIT, as you can see on the screen, uh, stands for Totally Integrated Sonar and Camera Inspection Technique. Yes, that's a mouthful. Um, what this does is it records CCTV, uh, but also creates a sonar image uh, so, we're, so we can see where there is sediment buildup underwater that the CCTV camera would not be able to see otherwise. Uh, for pipes where we found greater than 15% of the area was blocked, um, those were cleaned um, and correcting the defects will reduce unwanted flow in the system, uh, thereby uh, restoring additional capacity. So again, for this project, that was over 5,000 linear feet of TISIT uh, and 700 linear feet of cleaning. Uh, then we uh, did some hydraulic modeling um, using uh, flow monitoring data that we acquired uh, and those results lead us to develop recommendations for Carrie's engineering team. And so to talk about the engineering, I will pass it on to Mr. Carrie Williams. Uh, good evening, I'm Carrie Williams. I am the engineering manager for the Cap County Watershed. And I oversee a team of 13 engineers, six which are licensed, including myself, along with 17 GIS professionals as well. We are supported by four nationally, nationally known consulting firms as well. Next slide, please. So what's the problem? The problem is that the Cab County has Cab County has an aged infrastructure. Our most our infrastructure was installed around 1950s, making it 70 plus years in age. With age comes operational efficiencies, inefficiencies, such as reverse slope. Uh, we have cracked pipes, which is this project, which will address that type of stuff. And we have root, root invasion as well. This uh, area is on our, what we call priority fixed list, as you heard Ms. Howell speak earlier about. So to tell you more about this priority fix list and how we plan to address this issue, I will turn this over to Ms. Cassandra Marshall. Thank you, Carrie. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cassandra Marshall. I am the program administrator for CIP projects for watershed management. So to this point of the presentation, you've heard about the problem. I will speak to the solutions. Next slide. What does CIP stand for? Well, CIP or Capital Improvement Project is a project that helps maintain or improve an asset. It can either be new construction, an expansion, renovation, or replacement of an existing infrastructure. In early 2021, the Board of Commissioners approved a new 10-year CIP plan for $2.4 billion 
for projects to be completed from 2021 to 2030. I wanna say on behalf of Watershed Management, the department is grateful to Commissioner Rader, who is partly responsible for approval of the CIP plan. Thank you, Commissioner Rader. The Emory Sewer Line Improvement Project is a $5.3 million project that is included within that plan. My team, the CIP team, is responsible for getting the CIP work done. My team includes four DWM construction managers and 12 licensed inspectors. Later in the presentation, you will also hear from the DWM construction project manager for this project, Mr. Bacchus Jackson, who is a NACE level two certified inspector and a certified safety manager. Along with in-house staff, we are also supported by consulting firms who help assist the county with construction management and inspection services. Our primary message to the community is, we are here to help. We wanna reduce spills, eliminate emergency repairs, and protect the environment. And finally, after the project is completed, it will improve sustainability to the system. These improvements should last a minimum of 50 plus years. Next slide. So prior to the Emory Lining Project, the department has done some work in the area under what we call the House to Mill Sewer Repairs, phase one. In this phase, the following repairs were completed. We've lined roughly 4,700 linear feet of 24 inch and 48 inch parallel sewers shown in the map to the right in red. We've done one point repair and one manhole rehabilitation where we've raised the manhole to grade to prevent I and I into the system. Next, you will hear from the construction project manager, Mr. Bacchus Jackson. Thank you, Ms. Cassandra Marshall. Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you all for joining tonight. My name is Bacchus Jackson. I'm the, one of the construction managers, and I my team consists of one inspe inspector supervisor, three construction inspectors, and one community outreach specialist, and a host of other people for the Emory Sewer Lining Project. This evening, I will be providing you with the scope overview for this project. Slide. My team and I are the boots on the ground and the first line of contact for the project. From the first day of commencement, my team will be on site to ensure that construction activities, which includes one, clearing within the permanent and temporary easement, two, ensuring that erosion and sedimentation controls are in place, three, ensuring that the contractor is installing the correct lining according to the contract documents, drawings, and specifications. Four, ensuring that all safety measures are in place and last. Ensuring that all trenches and boards are backfilled and secure for the day. Slide. Let's talk about the project overview. Just as Mr. Zern from our regulatory compliance explained that he deployed his team out to assess and survey over 4,000 linear feet of ductile iron pipe. This assessment was done between the month of March 2016 until December 2018. After discovering that there were problems in the system using sonar, totally integrated sonar and camera inspection technique, which we call TISIC, the county placed work orders in place to address these problems. As of December 2021, 20, we have diligently planned our plan of attack through project preparation and community engagement. Following the community engagement, we will move into construction and eventually complete the construction process to include restoration around the end of September 2022. Slide. The project scope will include some limited easement clearing, which may include the removal of a few selected trees. The county understands that removing trees from the environment could possibly deprive the forest of the portion of its canopy. So the county will and has entered into an agreement with Emory University to replace those trees according to the university's policy. We will then set up bypass pumping this is a process that would divert raw sewage that is downstream to flow around the selected section of piping 
that has been designated to be lined and discharged and diverted raw, raw sewage into an upstream inspection chamber, otherwise known as a manhole. CIPP or other current in place piping is the industry standard name for the lining that will be installed in approximately 5,600 linear feet of existing 48 inch ductile iron piping. This will then take place while bypass and pump is occurring. Slide. Right here, we wanna look at our project map. In the last slide, we discussed by bypass pumping and why we constructed. On the project, it illustrates, on the, on the project map, it illustrates the route of travel of the bypass piping. The construction of the bypass piping, pumping will start on the Southwest section of Claremont Lake, Lake, Lake and run approximately 5,600 linear feet and in or discharge on the east of Houston Mill Road. As you can see, the line goes from the red, which is starts with the lake, and we will have above ground pumping all the way to the end of the bypass. Now, I know you see some purple lines. Those are private lines. And those lines, if they are, if we do have any problems, those um, community members will be notified and that line will be notified so that they can get them fixed. But the red line is the pumping and the green lines as we go is our, is our sewer section, which we're gonna be doing our CIPP problem. Once again, this will allow my team to line the adjacent pipe section, which is the green line. Slide. The method of construction will be cured in place pipe, which is a trenchless method of sewer construction. In the next five slides, I will explain this method. Slide. During the cured in place process, the liner that will be used will be inverted and installed into the existing pipe using water or air. The inversion tank is filled with compressed air or hot water, which forces the liner out through the inversion head. Slide. In this, in this illustration, the inversion process will be discussed er earlier, will be pushed through the existing pipe. And occasionally it will pass the branch openings and our residential lateral openings as the director explained about laterals. The branch openings are lined over during this process. This ensures that the fittings are protected and they will be robotically reinstated or reopened after the lining has cured. Slide. This illustration of the liner cured in place after a few hours. This forms a new pipe in the existing pipe section. Slide. Robotic reinstatement. This is where the use of a robotic reinstatement equipment, and it will be used to reopen the branches or laterals that were covered while we were doing the lining. Slide. As you can see, this view here is from the branch line doing reinstatement. The machine will cut the line cover section over the section so that the branch will be opened again. Guys, I hope this illustration helped you understand a little bit more about the cured in place process. Slide. Duration of the project. Easement clearing will start January 24, 2022 and continue through the life of the project. Construction access preparation will start around January 24, 2022. Construction will commence on or around February 2022, working from the downstream area beginning at the upstream segment of the project. Work activities will continue through September of 2022. Now, all dates are kind of in and out because of weather and the site conditions. Slide. Now, my team really take pride in that work. And one of those areas of construction that we focus on is restoration. 
We are best in class when it comes to restore those areas where construction may have taken place. We have reached out to property owners whose property will directly be impacted by construction activities and have reached an agreement on restoration. Overall, the construction team will ensure that the project is completed and the property properly restored. The picture to your left, if you could notice that, that's the depiction of a construction site which is a work zone. The picture to the right shows how property would be restored, in kind or better or better. Now, let's turn this back over to Ms. Cassandra Marshall, who will discuss community awareness. I will now speak to community awareness and what to expect. Next slide. So what to expect? Unfortunately, what comes with construction or inconveniences in which we plan to try to minimize. What you're going to see is a lot of construction traffic, foot and vehicles. There will be construction workers, county employees, and contracted consultants throughout your community. What also comes with this is the parking issue. They will be parked alongside the streets in your neighborhoods and sometime along the work zone. There will be material and equipment deliveries by means of large tractor trailers, the crews and flaggers would guide these large vehicles in and out of the neighborhood. And as an FYI, all county contractors and county employees will have an identification badge. The site will be somewhat noisy. Bypass pumps will generate noise. This photo is an actual setup of bypass pumps. And since this is a line of project of the existing pipe, bypass pumps will run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, until a segment is rehabbed and put back into service. Our typical work hours will be from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And it's also important to know the curing process for large diameter pipe can take up to two days. There will be a worker on site 24 seven until the curing process is complete. There's the potential of having silt on the street, but as an erosion control measure, the contractor will first install a construction entrance and exit prior to starting activities. This will reduce tracking of mud on the streets, but not fully eliminate the issue. If mud is tracked on the street, the contractor will be responsible for keeping the streets clean and swept daily. Lastly, there will be clear delineation of the work zone. This is usually just done by installing silt fence along the temporary or permanent easement and along ingress egress areas. Next slide. Also, the community will be prevented from accessing portion of the low water estate trailhead for the duration of the construction. There will be certain areas of the trail that will have detours and remain closed through the duration of the construction. However, there will be clear signage directing the public of any detours or closure, such as the signs shown to the right. Next, you will hear from Ms. Alicia Penny, who is the public relations manager. Thank you, Ms. Marshall. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alicia Penny, and I am the public relations manager responsible for communications and outreach for the department. Tonight, I will share with you the methods DWM will utilize to communicate with you about this project. But before I do that, I want to briefly recap what has occurred so far within the community. Our outreach team, has engaged with the Emory University PR department to ensure the department is following all of the university's protocols, as well as businesses in the area. Our construction and engineering team has also worked with residents to obtain right of entry access to their properties. Next slide. Leading up to tonight's meeting, you received a notification letter describing the details of the project and informing you of tonight's meeting. Going forward, 48 to 72 hours before a major change in construction, each homeowner will receive a notification letter like the one shown here, which will tell you the hours of work and what to expect during construction. We will also use the Gov delivery eBlast notification service to communicate with you. 
If you have not done so already, please take a moment to provide your email address in the chat so that we can capture that information for future use. Next slide, please. These are the touch points we will use to communicate. First, we have a dedicated project hotline, which includes a 1-800 number, phone number, and email address. We also have a dedicated web page for the project, which has tonight's presentation posted there, as well as other project information. We will use our Twitter and Facebook social media platforms to share updates on the project. We will also use news releases and the county's weekly newsletter entitled The Relay to share information as needed. Other ways we will connect with you, DCTV, which is DeKalb County Television, the Nextdoor platform, project signs, which earlier you heard about some of the signs that will be installed near the trails. Our contractors also um, serve as a point of contact. And finally, frequently asked questions are posted on our website, which may have the answers to some of the questions that you may have. Next slide, please. Listed here, you will find key contact information for the project. Most important is our dedicated project hotline and email address. Also listed here are the contact names of the engineering and construction team for the project. Finally, we have listed our 24 hour dispatch number if an emergency arises outside of normal business hours. Next slide, please. Okay, so before we get into the question aspect, I do want to give a welcome to Commissioner Terry, who is on the call and he did join us. He is actually um, supported the consent decree and all of these projects um, by yeah. participating <laughs> as a member of the um, PWI committee. Commissioner Terry. Yes, yes, thank you, uh, Maria. Yes, indeed, I have uh, uh, gone to school on watershed, water and sewer, <laughs> wastewater treatment, uh, water treatments. <laughs> um, so a pr great appreciations to Miss um, Maria Hauser for just being a really good guide um, and expert on what I, what I really appreciate is very complex matters. So um, just, you know, wanted to say appreciations there. And um, it's really great to see everyone on this call tonight. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your personal schedule to, you know, really, you know, stay engaged and, you know, care about what's happening in our community, um, especially with this project or, it, you know, I, uh, great presentation, everyone. Um, I, I learned a little bit because I, I knew a little bit about sewer lining. Uh, um, and so it was good to get kind of that little demonstration. So I appreciate the opportunity to, to continue learning um, and being engaged. And um, I, I, I will be uh, continuing ser serving on the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee this year. So I'm looking forward to working on, you know, supporting this project and other important ones to come. And I'm really excited about the progress that the, te the team is making. Um, I'm sure there'll be more great, you know, fun and really exciting announcements ahead about um, what's, what's ahead to, um, you know, really get economic development going. So uh, thank you again, Maria. Uh, I'll turn it back over to you, but um, you. everyone, you know, please st stay in touch um, and have a, a good rest of the evening. Thank you. Be great. So everyone, please feel free to put your questions in the chat. We already have a couple um, in there already. Uh, Ms. Carey has said, thank you for the opportunity to hear about the project regarding restoration. So this question, I'll be posing it to both Cassandra and BJ. How are the existing conditions of the project site being documented? Is a copy of this documentation available? And then similarly, um, we have another question, which is kind of related. Um, Mr. Nick, he mentioned that the agreement signed between Emory and the county states that things will be restored to a comparable state. What does this mean and who determines what is a comparable state? Um, and then there's another question. So I'll, I'm gonna wait and hear from Cassandra and BJ regarding 
how do we document existing conditions? Do we use videos? Do we use pictures? Do we walk along? Do we um, walk with um, the owner of the site and come to an agreement as to what this what is existing right now? Sandra, you want to take that or you want me to take it? You can take it. Okay. Um, Restoration is the key. My dad always said people don't, he worked in the same type of business. People don't know what you do on the ground, but they do know what you do above. And restoration is one of the things that my team take pride in. Um, we try to go through our, with our contractors, do a video of the area that may be impacted. Um, we notate that in what we call our SharePoint. Um, the SharePoint is information that is uh, online and, and documented for all of our inspectors do up throughout the, the length of the project. Um, is it available? Um, most times when we're dealing with a resident, um, we will, a citizen, we will actually do the recording and things of that sort and that, that person is there with us if we're gonna be a serious impact. But most times it can be available um, through our, um, our system, which you can request that information um, through downtown, uh, uh, through the Cab County downtown. But most of the times, we 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 videotape and take pictures. So BJ, we have already walked the site where we think there are impacts with citizens as well as with Emory over what we potentially believe are going to be impacts. And we've come to an agreement as to what restoration needs to look like. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, we have. Some areas we have um, walked the area. Um, some of the trees we have identified that we're going to be uh, removing. Um, I'm one of those environmental people and I don't like removing too many trees if we don't have to. But we have entered into a canopy uh, program and uh, we're gonna follow that to the letter. Um, I have a team of experts online right now that will, um, that knows exactly what trees to remove and what trees we're not going to remove. And if we do have to remove a tree, we're gonna follow the uh, university's policy. So we have that documented with the university? Yes, okay. yes ma'am. Yeah. So it's documented with the university as well. So they have a copy of it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the university has a copy of it. We have a copy. We don't think we're going to impact any other properties along the line. No, ma'am. Um, okay. Basically, so, the line, yes, I'm sorry. Okay, so just the Emory property. Is that correct, yes. CJ? Yes, yes, ma'am. All right. Um, I hope that answers um, the question. Ms. Carey and Mr. Nick, is that fine? So we can move on to Nick's second question. So the second question was, how will the closure of trails impact research, coursework, access to the preserve? So I'm assuming, uh, Mr. Nick, that as part of coursework or ongoing, you need access to the trails. Is that, I believe that's correct. Um, do we anticipate any impacts or any closure? Um, BJ or Cassandra? We I do. know we're working we hand do. in hand with Emory. We do. There will be some detours. I guess it'll route you away from the construction work, but you would still have somewhat some access to the trail, just not the particular section where we probably have the bypass pump set up. And Emory has already been notified of that, and, and I hope they're also communicating if that impacts any coursework or any um, research where access is needed. But we have tried to work that out already. Yes, ma'am, we have worked that out. Um, we have a really good relationship with the um, community leaders and um, also with the university. So if any of the coursework needs to be done, they're outside of the construction zone and most of the areas that's gonna be shut down are pretty much not that close to the trail. So we, we can work that out. We have no problem with that. Okay, thank you. Another question, Mr. Bobby. Um, will the work entail a gravel road like that on the Houston Mill portion of the project? 
what steps will be taken to prevent inappropriate use of such a road. Um, so unauthorized uses of the road. Um, the gravel roads that we've already, we we planning on setting up are what they call entry points to a lay down area. Um, equipment that's been laid down. Um, we can, I can give site one, one area that we're gonna be using, which is House of Mill Road. And that's basically, that kind of falls in line of another question I see on that talks about sedimentation and erosion. Um, that is a state law with, with when it comes down to an entry point to any construction zone. But appropriately, as I spoke in my presentation before, uh, we truly believe in restoration. And if there's anything that, that goes awry or goes wrong, I have um, four inspectors on site that um, <laughs> They're pretty good watchdogs, and they're going to make sure that we take care of that particular property if we if need be. Okay, thank you. So we do have a request to show on the slide the contact information. Just for everyone's notice, we do have a website that is set up for this project. This um, it does have a description, a map on there already. This presentation will also be loaded to that website. And if there are any significant changes um, to the project, we will also update that website. So what I will do is I will ask um, Cassie to drop or John to drop that in the chat again, the link to the website. Um, but let's also go back um, just to a couple of slides to show the contact information. So they will be able to, everyone in the community could contact um, Cassandra, BJ, know what the project um, hotline is. Um, and yes, this video will be available. I think it will be streaming Alicia typically through our YouTube channel. Um, a summary of this um, community meeting will be available online. Okay. Let's see if um, you could take a quick snapshot of that information. And then we will go to the project map again. Um, there's a question regarding um, where we're gonna begin the project as well. So let's go back a little bit to the map. Okay. Right, and let's talk through what goes first. Um, BJ or, um, let's see. Well, we have the contractor on the phone. They can Okay, so we can have the actual contractor who will be doing the totally. work. Totally, yeah, totally. Talk, talk through what you'll be starting with. Todd or Lee, aren't, aren't you on the phone? Okay, I guess not. <laughs> BJ, you I want to come through? Saw, okay, go ahead, Cassandra or BJ. Okay, go. Could you, could you repeat that question for me, please? So, could you walk through where are we starting with the project? Are we? You have the start of the bypass. Are we going to be starting in that section first and working through? Um, so we're going to be setting up the bypass first, laying the line. If you could talk a little bit about the steps of the process. Okay, that's no problem. Um, I think I spoke on that during my slide. Um, the construction of the bypass pump will start on the southwest um, section of, if you notice, they have a Claremont, um, Claremont Lake. Yes. says start bypass. That's where it will start uh, from a bypass point of view. Um, we will have approximately uh, 5,600 um, linear feet and it will end at the east end if you go up to where it says end of bypass um, on the other side of um, House and Mill Road, which is where it starts back into the um, sewer line. I think we got Todd on here. Todd? Yeah, I'm sorry. I couldn't get off mute. Can you hear me? Yes, we can't hear you. Okay, good. I, I just explained where the start of the bypass will, will start and where it will end. Um, one of the questions is to just walk them through 
um, the bypass process and then where we're going to start the lining and what sections are we going to go to. So if you can take it from there. Yeah, I sorry, I couldn't answer, Cassandra. I was trying to get off mute. But uh, basically, we'll mimic the exact thing that you just laid out. We're going to start at the apartments right there by the lake will be our first install. And we will move to Houston Mill Road from there in, in order. So our last shot will end right there at Houston Mill Road where your cursor is. Okay. And where will, the, where will you start with the actual lining, Todd? How, what part? And it's dependent on how quickly our subcontractor can clear the area. I'm hoping March, end of March, as it looks like, is what we're uh, aiming for on the clearing. That obviously depends on the weather and how quickly he can move. Our material is ordered. Our, our plan's intact. We're ready to go. It's just based off how soon can we get access to the area for our requirements. What area on the map, which, which section will you start the, the lining? Uh, this, the, there's an apartment complex and a lake that uh, BJ was referring to. It says start right there. That's where we would start as well. Just before the VA hospital. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you. Um, before I get back to you, Carrie, I'm gonna just tackle a couple of the other questions in the chat. Um, BJ, you mentioned the erosion and control methods. We have gone through permitting regarding erosion and controls with the um, state environmental agency. Um, do you wanna discuss any? Um, yeah. We can. Um, um, sure. all of my Just general. Yes, all of my inspectors are NPDES Level 1B certified, which are state inspectors uh, when it comes down to sedimentation and, or, and um, erosion. And um, we, we stay guard um, on that particular. It's a state requirement to make sure that we have sedimentation fencing. Now, I noticed that was a comment that says, are we going to stay on top of it? Yes, ma'am. We are. Yes, sir. Ma'am. Um, we are going to stay on top of um, erosion control, um, outlining uh, the areas where it's construction, outline, outlining the clear area where trees are not um, supposed to come down, um, and also as far as um, rested vegetation when it comes down to streamline. As you notice on that particular project map, there's a section that kind of comes very close to that stream. There's a buffer zone that we have to follow um, and that requires a double um, 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 uh, sediment fencing and also a, a um, um, spacing buffer in between the rest of vegetation from the start from the stop of the start of the rest of vegetation to that first barrier. And we also do another barrier. Now those barriers, if, if anyone's familiar with it, they have to be put in six inches in the ground. And that keeps that sedimentation from entering what we call the waters of the state. Thank you, BJ. And I believe the state will sometimes even send inspectors to make sure we're complying as well with the plan yes, um, that's been approved by the state. Um, I just want to tackle a couple of questions quickly because I know we have a, a lot going on. Um, this question is regards to other clearing that was done, which removed a lot of trees and brush in the sewer right away. Um, right now, the, the county, as part of its renewed maintenance strategy, um, trees, brushes are not allowed within the sewer easement. That's one of the issues. The roots from trees and brushes tend to get into the sewer, causing cracks and causing leaks of sewer into um, the ground and groundwater. And to prevent that, we are actually clearing a lot of trees. So the landscape is changing, but it's because of that purpose. Um, it's required a requirement of the ordinance um, that no trees are allowed within a sewer easement. So along the easement, there are no trees allowed. However, outside of the easement, we will be putting trees back. And that it's not just in this location, but throughout DeKalb County um, as we continue to maintain our system. Um, and it relates to um, Victoria Estates neighborhood. Um, I'm not sure if it's 
it's, I don't think it's related, but we are, um, to answer you, uh, Mr. Barry, we are having ongoing cleaning of our sewer easements. So this is going to be ongoing throughout the county. Every inch, every linear foot of, of sewer easements has to be cleaned per the consent decree requirements, um, either on a three-year, five-year, 10-year scale, depending on the growth um, in that area. Um, and where is this project um, expected to begin? Cassandra or BJ, when would we first start either clearing or setting up the bypass? January 24th. January 24th, thank you, Cassandra. Um, how many trees will be removed? Um, I believe that's documented in the Emory um, place. So BJ, do you know yes, it offhand? It, yes, it's, I'm sorry, um, I couldn't get it off of mute for some reason. Um, we're looking at somewhere around 60 or so, but we're gonna try to, um, that's kind of a, a little bit more than what, we, 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 what we've seen out there, um, but it's, it's that's a round, that's a round, very round number. And you say, can they get the document? Is that? Well, I, and I know we could always have the open records, but I think there is a, yes. um, there's a tree replacement plan as well. As I mentioned before, per odd ordinance and to protect the sewer lines, we cannot have trees within a sewer easement. It just, the roots get into um, the sewer is causing cracks and it's even a worse environmental issue when you have raw sewage spilling into the ground and getting into the groundwater. Um, <laughs> plans in place for fluid or discharge spills. Um, per the consent decree, we actually have a codified um, plan in the consent decree um, that we have to abide by. It's called the SERP and it that plan is actually available to the public um, via our Department of Watershed Management um, consent decree website. And um, I don't know if someone could drop that, a link to that in the chat, that will be great as well. Um, impacts to the walks along the creek, um, would there be impacts while we're doing the work and trying to get the neglected um, sewer system corrected? Um, some areas will be impacted, but we we um, pretty much walked the site um, maybe four or five times with um, Emory, um, the leadership at Emory, and we have identified those uh, those areas that will be closed, and those areas that um, the residents and in the, in, the, in the area will have access to. So um, Emory Emory and 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 Watershed has identified a lot of those areas. And a lot of the questions that I've, I'm looking at right now, we, we, we've identified those, okay. but okay. We've been small, limited impact. So similar to Mr. Nick's question again, preventing damage to the streams. Um, all this, the previous project, everything has been approved by the state. We're working within um, our state's regulations. Um, even though there is severe impacts, we work as to how we do erosion and sedimentation control, it particularly within the stream buffer, the cap ordinances actually have um, additional requirements beyond that of the state, I believe. Um, and of course, we've worked with our partners at Emory regarding this. Um, one deal is within um, traffic on Claremont. Do we expect any impacts because of equipment coming in or anything of the project? Todd, can you answer that? Ask one more time. I wasn't clear on what you're asking. Traffic, are there any traffic impacts anywhere? The traffic um, impacts will be at the, uh, the apartment complex where the bypass is starting and where we're beginning our project. And that mainly be some lane closures around there around the apartment complex as we are installing. There'll be a road ramp in place as well where we are trenching that pipe underneath the street. And we'll have to uh, have some flashing lights, you know, just allow everyone to know that I mean, a Corvette can cross it. Anyone can cross it, but they just need to know that it's there. So we just need to allow people to know that. 
There's also traffic control that will be needed when we are delivering our material on tractor trailers right there at Emory, excuse me, right there at the VA hospital. Uh, there'll be some steps taken there, the uh, precautions there in order to have that large truck go into that parking lot of the VA hospital. And we'll also have uh, one of our installs will be coming off of Houston Mill Road, our last shot, uh, which is a very busy road as we know, but that will be a smaller truck, but we will need traffic control for uh, the Houston Mill Road for that last install. Thank you, Todd. Um, Question regarding historical and architectural consultants. Um, because we're dealing with existing sewer lines that are there and we are gonna be working underground, um, it's not really impacting any structures that are there. This is to fix um, the existing sewer lines that are there. So no impact to any historical or architectural, um, architectural impacts um, anticipated. Um, phase one fabric erosion controls are still there. Um, do we have um, final, I guess, seeding or what do we call it? Um, final settlement. What is the language? <laughs> we cannot remove um, erosion controls until um, there is stable, I'm sorry, final stabilization. Um, and that is all dependent on the growth um, to control any runoff in that area. Um, so that is still there. Any other comments regarding that? BJ, you wanna add? Well, we I mean, typically you, you're okay. absolutely correct. Um, um, with the vegetation, we have to let it grow back. And once, it, once it's um, grown back in that particular area, then we will remove it. So we are following up on any sedimentation fences that we have up. I noticed that there was a question about using a different type of sedimentation fence. No, they're not there to be permanent. Um, we, we pull those up and the contract actually takes them away. So we just have to wait till the stabilization is, 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 is in effect. Um, we have um, grass seeds put down if we need to be, or the rest of vegetation has grown back into the buffer zone. So yeah, we, we will pull those up. Yeah. And I think the state will sometimes come by to see if they agree that there has been, um, you know, it's sufficient to remove erosion and sedimentation. Uh, Ms. Carey, I think this is your question um, regarding clarifying how do we get documentation? Um, all um, project records are available via open records requests um, on the Department of Watership Management site. Um, because we are working with Emory as a partner on this project, they also have a copy of this documentation um, since they're managing the site. And um, as BJ mentioned, I think he already discussed the amount of trees that will be removed. And the replacement plan is already there and documented with Emory. So just uh, as we do with other projects, a simple open records request, um, we'll be able to get you that information. Um, and the, that link is, is on the DWM website. Um, if you do it, just a search for open records and Department of Watershed Management, you should be able to get the link. Um, there's already a lay down yard um, with a bypass pump. And as we mentioned, work is not starting until the 24th of January. So we're just getting the project ready to go at this time. Um, there's a question specifically about to prevent the inappropriate use of the gravel road. Would there be any barriers put into place at the end of the day? Um, even though they're to monitor bypass pumping, we will have someone on site. Um, are we gonna have someone on site 24 seven? Can someone clarify yes. that? Uh, well, let me, let me repeat what the um, CIPP, which is cured in place piping. Uh, with our cured in place piping, uh, majority of the time, we're going to have someone out there, at least one or two people out there um, 24 hours a day. And I will let Todd speak on as far as the gravel roads. Um, Todd, could you speak on that? On the barriers to protect? Yeah, barriers, gravel roads, um, entry points into the sections that we're going to start curing in place. We had no plans to install barriers unless it's an area with, you know, it's on a cliff for safety reasons, but we have no plans to do that yet is the way that we have built the job. 
And but to, again, uh, is this, the site is going to be monitored 24 seven? Because of the bypass pumping. So when the bypass is pumping, 100%, we have to have line watch out there in case right. the, the unforeseen spill could occur or a pump go down. Right. So, yes, that when we are lining, of course, because our crew is going to be out there nonstop 24 7. And also, when the bypass is uh, pumping on, then yes, we'll have someone with our bypass side out there watching the line 24 7. And they walk the line up and down. That's their job. It's not a fun job, but that's their job. They walk it 24 <laughs> 7. 7, right, to check. And uh, um, going back, to, I'm sorry, I think BJ, I don't know if you said earlier that we would start the bypass at the apartment complex. That's where it does start, but the actual construction of it will start at the laydown yard off of Houston Mill, and we will work as far as fusing the pipe down to the uh, VA hospital and the apartment complex off of Claremont Road. I just wanted to clarify that in case mm -hmm. you, okay. if we start constructing and we tell you one thing and we're actually starting on Houston Mill. So we will start okay. at the lay down yard as far as the construction of the bypass. Okay. Thanks for clarifying okay. that. Um, right now, there are some questions regarding the use of the um, netting for erosion and sedimentation controls and associated BMPs. Right now, we are following the state guidelines for BMPs and what are acceptable uses. I know there is concern about um, whether it's degradable, et cetera. Um, we have not gotten into that. We are just following state standards for the project at this time and the corresponding BMPs um, in there, um, which does protect the waters of the US um, and the waters of the state um, and the approvals we've gotten from the state can be available from the state, from their open records department or from um, the Department of Watership Management um, at DeKalb County um, regarding the permits and what, what's included in, in that, the BMPs. Um, and is there a plan to maintain sewer easements? Um, yes, in, in the consent decree, the one program in the consent decree called the maintenance management plan does outline how often we need to clear sewers and, and there are additional contracts that are in place to maintain um, sewer easements being cleared and preventing overload. Their second question is, is a tra trail planned along the creek? Um, one thing, it's different. Um, the county has existing rights via an easement for the sewer line and the maintenance of the sewer line. When we start getting into having trails on top of the sewer lines, and I know both um, Commissioner Terry has asked about this and Commissioner Rader has as well, um, incorporating a trail network. However, our legal team got involved and said, that is not allowed under our existing easements. In other words, if you want to expand the usage to include a trail um, on a sewer easement, it will require going back and getting additional um, easement permissions legally um, by property owners to add in a trail. And then there will be additional costs associated with that not um which has to be segregated from cost associated with the water and sewer enterprise um, it's funded differently under um, the county's um, coffers so it has to be maintained separately as well it's really a great idea um, however there are some hoops that you have to jump through if you're going to do um, trails alongside um, sewer easements so it's it seems easy, but it's not quite as easy um, to accomplish. Um, let me see. And I think um, Ms. Carey, um, similarly, the, the buffer, um, anything, if we have any buffer variants, it will be um, similarly the open records between the state or even with the county because we have that documentation as well. 
Um, thank you, David. I think you dropped in some information, um, David, regarding the SERP, the emergency response to any spills. We have that that's in there. Um, I don't know if the silt fencing can be made temporarily permeable. I don't know if the state will be open to that, if, if that's um, an acceptable BMP. Um, does anyone know if that's even acceptable um, by state standards to have that as a BMP? Um, Fortunately, no, that would know. defeat the purpose of the, uh, the silt okay. fencing. So yeah. it has to be impermeable to prevent any silt from uh, damaging the waters. We wanna keep everything out. Yeah. I don't think that's an, so, so Nick, I don't think that's an acceptable um, <laughs> BMP and we have to follow the state regs. Um, Carrie, yes, um, Emery, as BJ mentioned, does have a copy of it. I think we had to get signatures, didn't we, Cassandra or BJ by Emery? Yes. Yes, yeah, so we, so they've signed, we've signed our piece, so it's fully documented. And thank you, Ed, for putting that information in there. Um, would the gravel roads be permanent? There's a question and it's answered no in there. Um, and anything um, that's related to the project, the state has evaluated the project. So any concerns regarding endangered species or, or any other, um, concerns with the streams, et cetera, has been taken into account before the state granted the county the permit. Um, and people, I, I guess the concern by the community is folks with Jeeps in the community, they were using the gravel road to cut through. Was that, was they referring to phase one? Yeah, phase one, that apparently people were using the um, gravel. I mean, I don't think it's a big deal to put, you know, a barrier if we need to. Uh, I'm talking about DWM, not um, the contract that you just put something there. I got you. Um, Mr. Bacchus. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the purpose of the gravel road is to lay the bypass pipe, correct? Well, the purpose of the uh, gravel road is to gain access to the entry point of the uh, access to doing the lining because we're going to go section to section. So the gravel road is just so that, you know, someone won't get stuck getting out in that little particular area. But if Todd wants to speak on that a little bit more, as far as the gravel roads, he can. Well, they're, they're twofold. Um, yes, they need them in some areas for the bypass to fuse the bypass pipe. But uh, as far as clearing for our needs, these are 100,000 pound trucks that we have coming in with this material. So we have right. to improve these areas. And like we said, up to the 60 trees that we're talking about, we have to clear those areas in order so that we have adequate access okay. for our crews to come in, to clean the lines and to install the liners. And thank you, Ed, for adding in um, answers in the chat regarding the life of the um, period in place. And we typically say at least 50 years. Ed has put it up to 100 years, but we like to, to hedge our bets. <laughs> um, it's, it is going to be a long time. And um, a lot of, because we are on Emory property, a lot of um, what we are allowed to do has already been negotiated with Emory. And and they have some things they would like for us to consider. And of course we will work with, um, as far as barriers, um, whatever Emory requests or what they allow us to do. We do have to be cognizant that we are with them um, there. So. Um, as far as, um, the silt fencing, as we mentioned before, um, we have to wait until there's stabilization. Um, so we cannot provide a timing as to when it will be removed. 
It all depends on when vegetation will grow back in that area. And that is dependent on weather and other factors. And we can't remove the silt fencing on the, until there is stabilization. Does that answer the questions there? So once we, and I think would it be removed piece by piece? Um, we hope, you know, it will be in full section. So it would not be someone coming back out there like every day or every week. Um, but it will be once the entire area for the project is stabilized, then it would be removed. Um, and sometimes we do have to get permissions from the state inspector that yes, you can remove um, the BMPs that are in place right now. Is that it? Carrie, did you have an additional question? Let me see. I did. Thank you, Maria, for the opportunity to ask. I wanted to follow up one more time on the question about documentation of existing conditions. Um, I've seen uh, what I believe is a copy of the contract that Emory signed, and I've checked in with the person I believe is the project manager, and they don't know of an, a document that shows the conditions on the site. So I'm hoping that you could um, that somebody might know who at Emory I should direct that question to if if you can confirm somebody has seen that documentation. Um, so I think in the chat, Ed, you put in that David Payne is the VP at Emory, who is our point of contact. Um, my understanding is that there is not documentation that shows the entire site, the existing conditions, aside from two pictures, which obviously on a project of this size can't capture much. Um, is there additional documentation of existing conditions besides those two pictures? There is, um, and we would actually, BJ, are you all doing video as well? We, we will be doing some video. However, um, some of the areas, as we go through section to section, Ms. Carey, uh, we will, before we affect or impact that area, we will come back and do another video. The contractor, we We've explained to them that we need to make sure we have those conditions down. But we have walked the site, um, Ms. Carey, about four, four or five times, um, and we've documented a few things. So Mr. Payne would be your, your contact at Emory University. Um, we do have some pictures. We do have some video, but most of them are pictures. I mean, are, are pictures, not video. Okay. So he is the person at Emory who is managing the project for Emory. Yes, and how the restoration will take place. Okay, so I think um, Ms. Carey, David yeah. Payne will be an excellent contact for you. Yeah, David Payne right here. I, I don't think I have what you're referring to. So I, I have not seen any videos for sure. So maybe we could follow up Ms., uh, Mr. BJ after, uh, after this because I'd love to get copies of all that. David, this is Ed. We can provide, you know, any pictures we took pre do and and the any copy of video that's done, uh, we'll certainly get it to you and to James. Great, thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Are there any other questions regarding the project before we close out the chat and the meeting? Okay. I have one more follow-up about existing conditions is that there's a significant um, tree removal that's of course already happened in the laydown area adjacent to Houston Mill Road. Is there documentation already of the trees <laughs> that were removed in that area um, that are part of this project and the conditions of that site prior to the start of the work? Gary, I have, this is Ed, I have a listing of all the trees, both ones removed and ones that will be removed, uh, as we've talked about during our walkthrough um, with the rest of your committee and uh, James. I don't, I couldn't speak to the documentation of the area prior to uh, the, the few trees that were removed in the lay down area. Uh, Todd might be able to speak more to that. I'm reaching out on the phone now to make sure that we do have documentation. I know that we took pictures. Let me, uh, give me one second. Okay, Tobias, I believe there's a question. 
Yes, hi, can you hear me? Uh-huh, we can. Yes, thank you for uh, letting me ask a question and thank you for this this forum, it's really helpful. Um, there's a number of us that are um, concerned about a population of sensitive amphibian salamanders that are using, uh, about to start using this vernal pool. Uh, they should be moving into the pool, the adults and breeding over the next several weeks, uh, four to six weeks maybe. It's a little bit hard to tell. They'll be laying eggs and then the larvae will be metamorphosing in June or July. And those animals moving in and out um, is something that we want to um, protect and allow if possible. And uh, it seemed like having a permeable silt fence was was not gonna uh, be possible. And so um, we're just starting to wonder um, how we can help and or protect these animals and allow them to to do their their natural breeding biology um, by either installing the silt fencing after they breed and then we could get their eggs out or um, if we could build ramps or if we could work with you in any way to to uh, help this situation uh, for these animals that are um, getting ready to do their their business in the middle of your project. Um, BJ, when is the state inspector coming on site? Or has someone been there to check on the BMPs when there was installed? Do we have to notify them? Um, yes, that that's usually what we what we try and do. Um, right now, we're we're kind of limited to the laydown area. Um, I would, Mr. Tobias, I would like to actually get some more information from Mr. Lambert Tobias and find out what, where that area is. And maybe we could um, come together and try to figure out some solution in that and, and not impact it unless it's in our easement. Um, if that's okay with Mr. Sure. Tobias, can you leave your information with us? And Cassie, if you're on the line, could you take his information down and we could explore this a little bit more than, than this open forum right now. Tobias, this is Ed. Are you referring to that uh, low area where the the uh, salamanders habitate or habitat? When yeah. we walked that yeah, when we walked pool. that property with the environmental committee, we uh, are putting a double row of sill fence and we understand the, the complexities. But we did walk through that and and laid out how the contractor was going to try to protect that area and not get not have any activity in that area. There will be some activity upstream or uphill of that area that we can't help. The bypass piping has got to go on that north side. Right. We we really appreciate that you guys are have the long term interest of the. Uh, landscape in, in mind. Um, unfortunately, the adult animals live in the forests, did uplands, and they migrate down to the pool. Um, so that's what we're trying to see if there's any kind of solution to allow these animals to move um, upgrade and downgrade um, at, at these different times of, of year. I, I think BJ, um... You and Danny and uh, us, we might need to take that offline to talk about that because we're we we have to stay within the guidance of the um, erosion control. Yeah, I'm in agreement with that. Like I said, with by the is, state, so it, yeah, if, yeah. If you take it offline, but that's why I was wondering when the state inspector will be there because they would you know, if there are any exceptions or any modification to the BMPs, because we don't want to want to run afoul of our permit, but right. they may be able to say um, or recommend something else. Um, Which is correct. With, you know, so typically before we put it in, and I can't remember, I haven't been an inspector for like over a decade, so I can't remember everything that has to happen in the sequence. Um, but normally we do do notifications to the state at some time. So 
Thank you, BJ and Cassie for taking no it offline um, with Mr. Tobias there. And we'll see if there's anything possible to be done. Okay. Um, we're getting to the eight o'clock hour. Um, so I wanted to start wrapping up and to emphasizing again. Um, Miss, Miss Hauser, uh -huh. Miss Hauser, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you. Um, I have a contact with um, Danny um, Mathis number. It is it's, it's incorrect. And I wanted to really give that number out. He's my inspector, super, um, my inspector supervisor. Um, can I, is that okay for me to put that in that chat or? Yeah, or sure. For Danny, you can okay. put it in the chat. So okay. We can have it there. All right, um, thank you. So we'll be updating the project information. And of course, all the um, permits that have got, been gotten. I know there's a lot of discussion over erosion and sedimentation control, um, what we're required to do um, by the state and of course our ordinance um, and what's and the buffer outside of the buffer, et cetera, if that's at all applicable. Um, and um, we hope that everything has been thought of. We really appreciate the engagement um, by our partners at Emory, the amount of time they've taken to walk this project with us and just to realize the criticality of um, just not having sewage or wastewater leaking into our grounds and into the groundwater um, potentially and to rectifying that situation as we continue to develop together as a county. So we are really excited. Um, a lot of the projects that we're doing right now um, as a part of the master plan, um, we do plan to have everything intact for another, is it 50 years on the master plan? Somebody help me. I think it's the master it plan. Thank you, David. Um, whenever we rehab, we are looking out um, into a 50 year window into the future, which will, you know, we're planning for the prosperity of not just the community, but also of the environment because both of them go hand in hand. Um, with that, I just wanted to see if um, Director Hayes has any closing comments or Commissioner Terry or Commissioner Rader. I'd like to also thank everyone for engaging with us this evening. Um, there were very good questions. We appreciate your concerns. And I want you to know that uh, we take your concerns very heavily and we will definitely give it great attention. Have a great evening. And I also want to thank everyone uh, for attending tonight. Um, clearly, uh, this project has uh, received an awful lot of uh, thought and planning, um, but it will likewise benefit from your continued input. And um, we uh, look forward to the opportunity um, to help to bridge any gaps and uh, to ensure a high level of both quality as well as satisfaction from the public um, while we meet our obligations under the consent decree and uh, continue to serve uh, your infrastructure needs. Thank you, Commissioner Rader and Commissioner Terry. You have the final word. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, great being with everyone this evening. Um, great questions here at the end. Uh, really appreciate the focus on environmentalism and ecological um, resilience um, and supporting those ecosystems. So uh, great, um, great job team from DeKalb uh, Watershed Department. Uh, really appreciate all the hard work um, and just keep up the good work and we'll look forward to updates um, as we move along the project. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Ms. Hauser, uh, this you. is John James. Uh, can we please ask everyone who's in attendance uh, to leave their email addresses in the chat so that we can keep them. Yes, uh, and I think a lot of people place their email address earlier on um, around the seven o'clock timeframe. Mm -hmm. So we have those, I believe, um, Cassie, but if you haven't, please do so we could add you to our communications network. Thank you, thank you so much, everyone. And bye-bye. Nice job, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And...
Recording, stop. Yes, ma'am, gonna end recording. Thank you. All right.